You've already seen her nethers tonight. And I, I'm a fan. I, I love Erica Napolitano. I love getting me some redhead writing. And now you get to do it in person, live on stage for Ignite Denver 14. Please give it up for at Redhead Writing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jared reminded me before this presentation started that if Twitter existed, this whole presentation wouldn't. So this evening, I'm talking about the history behind the history, the shit we don't know about famous people. I've always been a history buff, and I've always liked nosing around. So tonight, we're going to meet 12 people, among them Jacques and Dick. Let's get started with Jacques. We know him as the guy who made us fall in love with the sea, but he was falling in love outside of his 53-year marriage to Simone. He spent half the time courting around with a woman named Francine. He had two kids with each woman, and when Simone passed away in 1990 from cancer, a year later he took his own deep dive and walked down the aisle with Francine. Hey now. Benjamin Franklin, pimp, total pimp, started his career at a Philadelphia newspaper and writing, penning fake letters to the editor to drum up subscriptions. He also fathered a kid from a prostitute and was known for extramarital affairs with intelligent women. Totally hot, but supported the Dutch resistance in the Netherlands during World War II. She performed in underground ballets that raised money for the Dutch resistance and hid messages in her ballet slippers. Woo! This woman, the most beautiful woman in the world during the 30s and 40s, but bitch is why your cell phone works. She created frequency hopping technology that made cell phones, GPS, and the wireless internet possible. Hot! Julia fucking child started cooking up counterintelligence with the OSS. She was privy to so many top secret things, she developed a shark repellent to keep sharks from detonating underwater mines. Traveling the world of the OSS is how she fell in love with food. Before we started bogarting his song titles as kitschy names for medical marijuana dispensaries, John Denver was a folk legend. But did you know that Henry John Deutschendorf couldn't join the army because he lost two toes in a lawnmower accident? This guy is a total hot sandwich. He's the original mind-body connection dude and was quite the athlete. And I can't help but to think this motherfucker would have lived in Boulder. A holds an MFA from Yale, but was anything but smart in school. See, Henry Winkler had dyslexia, and so all his teachers thought he was, stu was stupid. He writes children's books now to with for kids with dyslexia to remind them they're anything but. The original government bailout right here. When he was the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army, he turned down a $1,000 salary in favor of an unlimited expense account, where he proceeded to charge $440,000 worth of liquor and poorly documented personal things. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> Steve Buscemi was a firefighter in New York City in the 80s. On September 12, 2001, he rejoined his old fire station to dig through the rubble after 2011. And the best Facebook page on the planet to follow. Did you know that George Takai spent all of his childhood years in a Japanese-American internment camp? That sucks. <laughs> now, some of you are saying, Erica, that is some useful shit that you just dropped on us, but that's only 11 people, what the fuck? This presentation is conspicuously lacking dick. <laughs> Let's get to it in three steps. First, we have to remember that the word story is a part of history, and we're never going to know the whole story. So lesson number one is to ask relentless questions about every story you hear, and remind kids that when they hear history, it's probably just that, his or her story. Part two is, you know, I totally just space number two, which means I get to add lib. Yay! Number two is that the most interesting part of history is usually the story we don't know about anyone or anything. And now you're still wondering, Erica, where's the dick in this presentation? Well, the sad part is, is it's probably you and it's probably me. Because we go through life with these preconceived notions about our friends to famous historical figures. And it's those preconceived notions that keep us from meeting and understanding some pretty fucking cool people. So the next time that we think that we know everything about anyone or any situation, 
we would do well to remind ourselves that we don't know Jacques.